Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Rishu Sharma, and I lead the cloud and AI research for IDC India, where I speak to the end user group like yourself, as well as the vendor community to understand where is the gap exists and how we can leverage the technology to cover it. On my slides today, I'm going to talk about how organizations can reinvent themselves with artificial intelligence. I will also take you through a couple of examples of organizations who are doing just that. Now, uh, IDC has been tracking the technology market for a very long time, and we also track the impact on the users as well as the enterprise group. It started with the first platform, which was more around the mainframe era. The second platform saw the impact and you know, investments being made in client networking and servers. Third platform, which is where we all today are, saw the ushering of technologies like social, mobile, analytics, as well as cloud. While the deployment in the beginning stage, which was the experimentation stage, was in siloed implementation, but it did empower the customer. The multiplied innovation stage, which is where we all today are, is the stage where organizations are realizing the value of data. Data is the new oil. In fact, most of the organizations that we spoke to are looking at ways to utilizing and monetizing this data in various forms, like data as services and many more. The third era, which we predict is going to you know, start in the coming year, is the era of autonomy, which is where we're going to see the fully blown artificial intelligence come into picture. Now, artificial intelligence will be deliberate because we don't want it to go wrong. It will be measured because we really want to track the impact that it has on the processes. And it will be sporadic in nature when it comes to implementation, because not all organizations are going to do it at the same pace. Now, while, while we believe that the artificial intelligence in its full stage will start in the coming year, it has already started to make much headway. In fact, at the beginning of the year, IDC had made certain predictions regarding AI. Let's see where we stand on that. So we had predicted that close to 40% of the digital transformation initiatives will be supported by AI. And we're already seeing the Indian organization spend on AI, you know, increasing at a CAGR of 85% for five years. Not only that, IDC had also predicted that 45% of the revenues for enterprises are going to be driven by future of commerce models. Now, future of commerce business models are the forms wherein there is an application of third platform technologies as well as innovation accelerators, including AI, to change the way we've been doing businesses between individual organizations and things. In fact, 44% of the organizations that we spoke to in India said that they have plans to harness the power of future of commerce technologies. Not only that, we also predicted that 20% of the spend by large enterprises will be on ML-based software to do new things like synthesizing the data to make presentations. In fact, close to 32% of you that we spoke to have plans to spend on the software in the coming year. We also predicted that 20% of the COG AI efforts will be based on the uh, you know, heterogeneous infrastructure compute. And close to 23% of you had mentioned that you have plans to spend on the AI infrastructure in the coming year. We've seen what has happened in 2018. Now let me take you through to what we predict for 2019. Now we do have predictions for CIOs for 2019. IDC predicts that close to 70% of the CIOs will be under pressure to have AI implemented in their IT processes, driven purely by you know, cost-cutting efforts, getting more innovative, getting more agile. Not only that, 65% of the uh, CIOs will have to work on the governance policy when it comes to AI. And 75% of the organizations that don't do that will sort of fail. Well, this all is really happening. Let's see, what is it that is happening in India? Close to 47% of the organizations that we spoke to said that they have plans to adopt AI in the coming year. Primarily driven by things like, you know, having, increasing the automation, increasing the employee productivity, and uncovering new insights. Organizations are looking at things like, uh, you know, proven solutions, having off-the-shelf applications with AI embedded in them, 
and also onboarding support when it comes to free trials, maybe. There's also another interesting thing that came up in the research. When we spoke to the organizations in 2018 and we asked them which are the technologies are, that you're going to leverage when it comes to your digital journey, only 9% of the organizations in India stated AI as you know, the uh, technology that they'd be investing in. But for 2019, that number increased to a whopping 40 to 44%. In fact, among the top technologies for organizations in India, AI was not a priority in 2018. For 2019, close to 30% of you had said that AI is amongst the key priorities for you. We're also seeing a lot of Indian organizations adopt to AI. Marico is leveraging AI to seek you know, patterns and predict behaviors when it comes to its distributor. Not only that, they're planning to look at AI to launch new products with their e-tailers. ICSA Lombard is leveraging AI when it comes to having instant approval for their health insurance claims. Titan, on the other hand, is allowing AI to lead their processes that collate the data which arises from the social media around the, you know, the color coordination or the size of the watches. Pyramid Glass implemented real-time manufacturing insights, and it did help them get a, a you know, employee productivity increase of 25% and decrease the error rate by 5%. Well, this all is happening, and we know that AI is making headway. How is that organizations can look at it? IDC defines the AI-based automation framework. Now, we very closely evaluated the uh, interactions between the humans and machines on three major parameters, including how the data was being fed to the machines, how the machines were analyzing that data, and how that analyzed data was, me was being used to make decisions. IDC defines this framework basis of the level of automation scope ranging from a human-led, which is more like the human doing the analysis, as well as the governance bit, to a machine-controlled bit, wherein everything, uh, including the analysis and the governance, is taken, uh, you know, taken care by machines. Organizations can leverage this framework when it comes to you know, getting opportunities as well as risks associated with AI-based automation. Let me give you an example. For example, for a healthcare setup, Having the activity related to patient record can be an activity which can be human-led but machine-supported. Having the diagnosis and treatment could be a process which is machine-led but supported by humans. But having things like interpreting the medical images could be a task which is machine-led but governed by the humans. Organizations must understand that on their journey for AI, they must look at having the right people who are trained with the skill set and have the caliber to work with the machines. We need to define the processes that will have AI injected in them. Not only that, organization must also invest in platform that allows for innovations for AI. On my coming slides, I'll take you through each of these pillars individually and also show you a couple of examples of organizations who are doing just that. Let me start with the strategy bit. Now, AI is not a magical wand. It is purely based on mathematics and statistics that can help organizations gain accuracy, automation, as well as acceleration. Having a successful AI strategy involves it being a part of the business strategy and not being treated as a technology advancement. For organizations to have AI strategy, there are three major components. One, you have the high scalable computing power the rightly attuned algorithms, as well as rich data set. Now, computing power is something that can be you know, bought over or leveraged over cloud. Algorithms can be leveraged over open source platforms. But data is something that can help an organization create a differentiation in the market. Organizations must understand that no amount of sophistication in the algorithms can make up for lack of data. Let me give you an example on that. Now, the United Services Automation Association is an organization established in 1922. 
the chief digital officer announced that they're going to have an AI first strategy. But the company is able to differentiate itself because the sort of data it has when it comes to individual profiles, family profiles, individual income, family incomes, is very unique to the organization. And the company has been able to create a humongous data set, combining it with external data for the machine learning. On my next slide, I'll take you through the people's pillar. Now, we are seeing the rise of machines. In fact, in the coming year, IDC predicts that machines will be training other machines. By 2027, we'll see applications that are being developed by machines re requiring no developer, developer involvement at all. In fact, we're also predicting the launch of the first commercial human robot fusion application by 2027. Now, just the other day, I was at my daughter's school and uh, you know, the educators started talking about cloud and AI. And I was really happy. I thought it's my chance to redeem as a very successful mother who knows everything. But uh, you know, the educator brought up something that really got me thinking. So my daughter is in kindergarten now. They said by the time she's in class 12, there are not going to be any jobs. So what she really meant is what we also see at IDC. 50% of the jobs that are existent today will become obsolete by 2027. And it is not because they will be overtaken by machines. It is, it is purely because machines are going to work in coherence with the humans. Let me give you an example. Now, Walmart has recently rolled out its Auto S robots, which is the shelf scanning robots. It is Auto C scrubbers, which are you know, bots that can scrub you know, themselves, as well as the Alpha bot. Those are AI systems that can, that can help unpacking trucks uh, related to refrigerated products. But the organization has realized that it is primarily about working with the machines. The employees were able to have a lot of you know, free bandwidth, which was put to productive use, rather than you know, focusing on mundane tasks. On the next slide, let me take you through the technology pillar. Now, we all know that you know, for AI to be successful, we should start with injecting in the processes. But it is not as, e as easy as it sounds. IDC defines the intelligent process automation as a set of technologies that can be leveraged individually or collectively to you know, manage, automate, as well as integrate processes. Organizations can look at things like robotic process, uh, robotic process automation, context, contextualization related to content, intelligent processes, to sort of have their processes simplified, error-free, and have them intelligently automated. On my coming slide, I'm going to show you an example of an organization that is trying to do just that. Greetings, Harish. I have heard you hold a world record in debate competition wins against humans, but I suspect you've never debated a machine. <laughs> Welcome to the creature. Let me wrap up this speech in a way that I hope you can relate to. Advocating welfare is like offering a hand to someone who fell. It's basic human decency. We are making good use of government money because they carry benefits for society as a whole. It is our duty to support them. There are two issues I will elaborate on now. I will start by explaining why preschool is an important investment. Secondly, a few words about poverty. While I cannot experience poverty directly and have no complaints concerning my own standards of living, mm -hmm. I still have the following to share. Regarding poverty, research clearly shows that a good preschool can help kids overcome the disadvantages often associated with poverty. You will possibly hear my opponent talk today about different priorities and subsidies. He might say that subsidies are needed, but not for preschools. 
I would like to ask you, Mr. Natarajan, if you agree in principle, why don't we examine the evidence and the data and decide accordingly? Thank you for listening. Now, this is the uh, project debater, an AI system that IBM had been working for close to six years. Luckily, Natarajan won. Sorry? Luckily, Natarajan won this debate. Yeah, so he was part of this debate. So Harish Natarajan is the worldwide the Guinness Book record holder for the, the debating championship. So while, uh, you know, the interesting part is that the panel felt that Natarajan's arguments were better than uh, AI system, but it definitely is a huge step in the future of AI. Imagine the system was able to, you know, logically bring in the arguments and also predict the arguments that your opponent was supposed to get. Well, this is all good, but, you know, the challenges associated with AI cannot be ignored. In fact, recently in October 2018, Amazon had scrapped their uh, human recruitment application, which was based on AI. So what that application was doing is to gather all the resumes that were there and sort of handpick the individuals which were correctly matching the uh, you know, skill set that was available. So, but the uh, company was quite quick in realizing that the uh, you know, application had a challenge when it comes to bias against women. There are challenges, you know, but organizations do need to understand that while a machine can be successful to a task, it might not be as successful for a process. Having the you know, process being fully successful, it has to be an iterative process between the humans as well as the machines. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I come to my last slide. Now, as we all progress on our digital journey, and we do realize that AI can be one of the key enablers for us to distinguish ourselves in the market, we must realize that AI is a business strategy and not a technology advancement. It is based on the data that is available. Now, the data has to be ready when it comes to governance, when it comes to privacy, as well as when it comes to the richness of the data. Not only that, Organizations must identify the processes that they should start with, you know, injecting the AI with. It has to be a top-bottom approach with starting with C-level executives. And the last point, we have to think of AI more as augmented intelligence rather than artificial intelligence. It is about machines working closely with individuals rather than machines replacing the humans. We could look at things like, you know, training the existing staff, specifically staff related to big data analytics, as well as leverage the partner ecosystem that we have. Now, with that, I'd just like to leave with a parting note that as you all progress in your journey, you guys do realize that it is about the machines working with all of us together and not replacing us. Thank you so much, everyone. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you.